What's that a slay queen to you? I always ask ladies that are interviewing this. Eh, 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 eh. Slay queen? Yeah. It's those girls who don't mess around. <laughs> <laughs> they have no time to waste those girls. <laughs> they are on the budget. <laughs> they are on the budget. Uh, but on a serious note, I mean, in, you know, obviously the word comes from. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. It's okay. They'll be fine. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah, but now I, I don't. I, I used to. To, to do it a lot I used to why did you stop um, it became it became too much yeah also uh, it's also it's, it's, it's hard when you you, you speak to people uh, you know um, you know openly out of concern and then um, then they carry on mm. <laughs> you, you, you mm. sound like a party pooper <laughs> especially because like I said I am not in you know I'm not I'm not being offered the money I'm not being offered the drugs yeah. I'm not being offered the alcohol uh, because my position stands on, on a lot of things. I'm not going to be promoting this. I'm not hey, going to what be... did you think of the Zintle and Enzle interview? Oh, gosh. Okay, I said something about that interview and then some people didn't like what I said. I said they, 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 they sh- that interview should have been about them, not about the boys. Mm. Yeah, and you know, What's wrong with that? Because we give you guys so much attention. It's unnecessary. Mm. Like, I, I, I hate it when people constantly make it about the guy that you date or you dated. Like, mm. And then, you see... When you don't answer, they're like, oh, okay, she's hiding something. And when you say something, they're like, oh, she's bitter. It's like you don't win. So I'm, I live in a, in a you know, space where I'm, I'm going to say what I want to say when I want to say it. Because I have to say it um, on my terms. Uh, but you're not going to dictate to me what I should say and when uh, I should say and how I should say it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and also, look, some people say silence is golden. But people conclude all sorts of nonsense about you. You know, why are you trying to take the high road? Um, and, and unfortunately, we don't, li- we don't live in a conscious environment where people understand what the high road is. So even. is that why you prefer tweeting about your ex as opposed to talking about him like in interviews and stuff? Yeah, because then, um, you know, for example, we're doing this interview, you can edit me now yeah. and make me sound the way you want me to sound. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't I, do that. Yeah, well, you <laughs> wouldn't, but it has happened to me before. Is it? Yeah. You lie. I'm not lying. Especially you YFMers. <laughs> <laughs> they, were not, they were notorious for that, for editing me and making me sing, sound. I heard the wife and DJs used to talk at you when you were admitted. Yeah, you know, yeah, Fred Joe actually uh, kind of like re- uh, freed me last year when I did an interview with him when he said to me that... Um, you know, we, we, we were envious of you. We wanted yeah. to get Metro. Yeah. You know, we, may, we we targeted you because, you know, you were easy target because you How came to our party, to parties. I mean, they would record me at events and edit the clips and make me sound like I said something stupid. Wow. Um, I would go, there would be, one time I remember driving from a club, listening to Sbu. They were all talking about me taking calls on me on air. Wow. And then people used to make jokes, you know. But isn't that the spirit know. of competition? No, but who? I was not competing with them. I was mm. not in their league, mm. you know. But I mean, I couldn't speak like that. Yeah. I was the same age as them, but I was not in their league. And then if they had a problem with Metro, they must deal with that. Yeah, you not know? you. Not me. So, and then also, obviously, because I had a cross relations across, they made it about that. And, mm. then, and then it became an issue because then that, person was not defending me in that oh, space then okay. it, I felt like a, I'm a crazy woman and everyone believed that I'm a crazy woman because of that perception that was created and it's not true I'm the one of the smartest women you know <laughs> <laughs> even though I was you know in a psychiatric ward because of that nonsense that would make me stupid do you think you're mentally ill? no I'm not mm. no I'm not mentally ill yeah, yeah. no no I'm not I'm very mentally balanced yeah. uh, I'm an I'm a, I'm a empath um, I'm What's very that? conscious Like I feel things oh, okay. I feel I'm very sensitive mm. uh, You know I'm passionate uh, I bring emotions To things that I do And then in environments Where I'm not accepted or For what I am That rejection uh, Gets to me Then I kind of like Lose a sense of self But yeah. there's nothing Wrong with me yeah. You know So um, I'm not I didn't have to get on meds uh, and, I, and I've been, not been For 15 years I eat healthy I work out I sleep I tell you know when I'm tired I sleep. If yeah. I if I haven't slept I work through my my thoughts. Um, I, I articulate how I feel because it's important to me. Because part of for me I believe part of like the challenges around depression is holding on to things and and not saying how you feel and how it affects you and making people understand who you are and what you come from. Like you must constantly shut up. Yeah. Like be muted. Yeah. No, I can't so, be. So so being at the peak of your career as Penny Penny. Yeah. Now you start as Penny to... Pain. <laughs> Not Papa Pain. Yes. <laughs> uh, now other it girls are coming. Yeah. And you're not as relevant as as you once were. 
Does mm. that have a part to play in, in or you really don't care? I don't I, I don't subs- I don't believe in the word of relevant. I I'm evergreen. Mm. I will always be I will always matter yeah. because I bring value. Yeah. So I don't sit around going am I relevant or irrelevant. I yeah. mean people say things like that that you're relevant. I'm thinking, "Hey, does it matter to you?" It doesn't matter to me, mm. you know? Um and 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 also again, like I said, my beat is different. You know, uh this it girl thing or whatever, um you know, for a cohort of the last 10 years, these are people who came in 2009 mm, mm. Um, into 2010 now. Mm. Um, you know, it was about um, um, being it girls, mm. uh, you know, being bikini clad. Mm. Uh, it was about aesthetics, mm. you know. So for me, it was never about aesthetics, mm. um, you know. So I don't even see myself in the same space as them, mm. you know. And, and then spiritual. also, uh, very. And then the girls who were older before me, I mean, I, there was a lot of beauty queens who were prim and proper, who, who had to speak English a certain way. I didn't give a foot about that. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I, 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 I articulated myself the way I felt. I wasn't trying to impress white people. Mm. So even if I worked in white productions, I was a black woman uh, who had a voice who wanted to be heard, who's coming in to bring value in a different context. So I was bringing my experience of being a rural girl and being a township girl. I wasn't coming there to try and be a girl from Senton because I'm not from Senton. Mm. So, and then I didn't win Miss Essay or Miss Soweto. I was not trying to be, uh, you know, to sound, uh, you know, articulate and proper. And I wasn't ashamed of the fact that, mm. uh, or I go to Bush Park Ridge or Kile Koming. And then, so I also, so I didn't see myself in competition with any of those people. Yeah. And and for me, it was shocking when I found that, oh, people want to get on radio because they think they can be the next penny. I'm like, oh, what the heck? Are you people for real? Do you know where I come from, <laughs> from with this stuff? You know, and they tried. Yeah. yeah a lot of them tried. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and then I, I made a decision uh, that I'm not in competition with anybody. When you look at uh, broadcasters like Anela, are you Oh, Anela is my girl. Are you envious? No, I'm not envious. I'm very happy for Anela. Because mm. you know what? Anela started from the bottom and built it up and she was patient and she had a lot of support from day one. I think for me, um, Anela's probably one of my favorite radio stories. You know, um, you know, I listened to Anela when she first got on Highfield. Mm. And, you know, like I reached out to her then. And, you know, to find out that, you know, she's got the backing of the likes of Ravi and they're mentoring her and they're supporting her. That, you know, that for me, I was like, I wish black men could do that, mm. uh, you know, on radio. Mm. And, and it, but, I, but somehow I also knew that I would not be a candidate for, for that, mm. <laughs> you know. Um, but I mean, I'm, I know other people who were probably in a similar position, mm. uh, you know, but um, they didn't have the same talent and flair that Anele has. Give me your top uh, five radio uh, jocks of all time. What's your top five? Gosh. Oh, oh this one's going to be interesting. So, um, okay, I'll definitely have Chili. Okay. Um, I will have uh, Semi Saviti when he... Semi T. Why do I keep... The Semi Saviti is the guy who did Idols. Okay. And then Semi T. Uh, is How he, dope was Semi T? Semi T was on Studio Mix at some point. He did the Coca Cola Top 40 on Metro. How was that? There it? has was never it? been a Top 40 like that, wow. Chana. Uh, you know, uh, Chili, I definitely rate him. Um, um, you know, Anela's got an impeccable comedy, com- comedic timing. Mm. Like, you know, just she's in my top. She's in my top three. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. She's that's got impressive. she's got an impeccable comedic timing. Yeah, like that's what that's her flair. Yeah, you know. Um, who and else? you can tell she's uh, worked hard to perfect. Yeah, it. she's work. Yeah, she's had she has good support and good coaching. Yeah, yeah, to do that. Um, who else? Um, obviously, then I'll go to I'll go to Max Mojapilo on Tobela FM. Okay. Uh, you know, he did the wedding show. Yeah. Did you used to listen to Sobel FM? No, 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 no. you grew up listening to what? To Palapara. Palapara. Palapara, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I don't know the Palapara guys. Yeah. Um, so, I'll go with Max. Uh, obviously, if I grew up listening to Ukoze, I'll go with, with Kansas City. Mm. But I'm going to be, I'm going to be, please, allegiance to my home mother tongue. Mm. It's part of my lineage and my heritage. So, I take pride in that. Yeah. Um, you know, so, 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 I'll go with Max. Uh, um, you know, uh, but I mean, he sits in the space as, same as Kansas, Kansas City mm. um, on Nukozi. And then I would go for, um, um, so I had Anele, I have Chile, I ha- who else did I mention? Semi T. Semi, semi, yeah, of the internationals. Then um, I would do, then I would teach my Taz. Teach my Taz. Uh, Tish Mataz and then um, hmm. what do you think of Fat Joe? Um, okay yeah you're not a fan if I have if I have if I have Chili Chili and Fat Joe I'll probably put them on par yeah, yeah I'll put Chili and I'll put Fat Joe and Chili 
uh, on par. Glenn Lewis? Uh, no, Glenn is my boy. I, I love him. But Glenn is, 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 is the don't care guy. <laughs> Glenn just goes with what he goes. So, you know, I, I, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's Glenn, man. It's Glenn. It's Glenn. It's like, you know, so I think and, for... And you guys, you never had beef. You guys were no, like... No, Glenn is like my brother. Yeah. Glenn, Glenn protected me from a lot of goons. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Glenn's probably the reason why I disrespected a lot of men. Because <laughs> I'll be like, I'm going to tell Glenn's going to talk about you on the radio. What so he was the great one. I'm the fly one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the teddy bear, I think, okay... The teddy bear of the airwaves, Glenn. Mm-hmm. I'll take. Mm-hmm. Not Glenzito. Mm. Yeah. I'll take the teddy, teddy bear. bear. When he was a teddy bear. Yeah. Ah, I'll put him there. And then, um, Shucks. What about Spoo? What do you think of Spoo's radio? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Spoo. Noxman. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He's my guy, but he's not my guy like that. You know? He's my guy, but he's not like that. He's not my guy like that. No, no, no. Spoo, Spoo, Spoo has, has an agenda and, 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 a, and a content that he drives. So it's a, it's a whole different thing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, um, what about Dineo Ranak? Oh, yes. How can I forget Dineo? I'm looking for... Yeah, because I'm trying to think of another girl. Yes. Definitely Dineo. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Dineo must just be set free. Yeah, yeah, yeah Like, yeah. they must just free her. Yeah, and like, and sh- and yeah, shackle her. They yeah. just keep shackling her. I'm like, let that girl be. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely Dineo. Anele. Um, Chili and Fecho. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then... Same WhatsApp yeah, group. Same WhatsApp group. <laughs> um... Yeah, Mark Gilman. Oh, Mark, oh, Mark Gilman. Oh, what a ledge. Mark Gilman. What a So I ledge. gave you Titch Matez, right? Yeah. Yeah, I gave you Titch Matez, yeah. Uh, so that's like music radio. Um, Fresh doesn't make it to the list. Uh, French is a good house DJ, guys. Can we just <laughs> leave it at that? <laughs> Can we just leave it at that? He's a good house DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, I don't know, on the chair. Yeah, what else? But he's had a good career, though. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for him. He's had a good career. That's great. Yeah. 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 He's had a good career. What do you think of uh, Metro FM lineup right now? Um, it needs a lot of shaking up, but it's, it's, it is what it is, <laughs> you know? Um, Dude, how do you get to Metro, bro? I've been trying for four years, bro. Oh, good luck, sweetheart. I don't know. <laughs> You need to find somebody who knows somebody to speak to somebody about something that somebody wants for somebody to get that thing. <laughs> Good luck to you. Start your own radio station. Let's start uh, with, with breakfast. What, what do you think about the, the breakfast show right now? Uh, more. And I want you to be honest. More reminds me a lot of Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, more reminds me a lot of Fresh. I don't know. So yeah. I can only take one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love them both, but not like that. <laughs> I can only take one. I can't have them. <laughs> Mo reminds me of fresh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, yeah. Who's after? Who's after the breakfast show? Come on. It's Dineo Lerato oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and so and so easy. Yeah, that show. Yeah. What do you think about that one? Um, I I I I, I love all three of them, but can I just have Dineo alone? Yeah. 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 I just want her alone. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy because it sounds like three hosts. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think it is. Yeah. I have no idea, but yeah. yeah. But I, I love, I love, I love women to be free on radio. Mm. I hate it when women are crowded on radio. Like they must have, they must have freedom to think and be and articulate themselves without being hindered. Yeah. You know. Uh, oh, and it's not just. So it's it's so easy. It's Lerato. It's naked. Who JJ. else is in this? JJ. Like it's a lot. <laughs> Let the girl breathe. And <laughs> uh, then there's Thomas and and, and Pearl. Oh, I like Lazy Thomas. Yeah. Why do you call him Lazy Thomas? <laughs> because Thomas is just laid back. He's from Cape Town. There's no rush for nothing. Thomas is perfect for talking to you when you're eating and chewing your food properly. He's yeah. that guy. Yeah. But I love, I love Hip Hop Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Do people say you look like Pearl? Sometimes. Meh. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes they do. Are you guys close? Uh, I, we get along. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I don't have beef with nobody. I sp- I speak to everybody. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah, but don't you yeah. get tired of the industry? Hey, the fake shit. Like, uh, hey. Well, you I, too old for I'm, that. And I'm a Capricorn. I don't give a shit. If you if you vibe with me, I vibe with you. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you have time for me, I have time with you. If yeah. you have no time for me, I don't have time for you. That's And then I've always been like that. And what do you think about the drive time show? I thought they were going to give it to Thomas, eh? Honestly. <laughs> Spare and, and Naves. Yeah. I think they must go back to Durban. <laughs> I, think oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I love them too. Yeah, yeah. But, but I don't know. You know, 
<laughs> Sometimes I can't keep up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, actually, I like Mo on drive, mm. on afternoon drive. Mm. You know when Mo was on afternoon drive? Mm. No, I never used to listen. Alone. Yeah. I listen to everyone. Yeah. I can, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like on 947. Mm. I like Greg and Lucky on drive. I mean, I'm not saying that they mustn't have fresh, <laughs> but can Greg and Lucky come back? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm like, and Mansui. Yeah. Then I was like, oh, Greg and Lucky's gone. Okay, I also was a big fan of Anele and... Um, Grunt. And Grunt. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was my favorite combo. Yeah, they were dope. Uh, they, they were, were dope. dope. Like, yeah. they were dope. Yeah. Like, you don't understand. Like, I used to get in my car seat from like 7 to 9. Mm. You know what I mean? Gareth uh, Cliff. Gareth Cliff in the morning. Mm. Um, yeah, I like Gareth Cliff. But then, we, then then he just goes on a tangent that I just like, I'm like, ah, Gareth, I mean, really just like, this is just too much sometimes. <laughs> but, I, but I discovered the, the guy from YFM now who does Uncle. Ankle tap. Yes. yes. He does breakfast. Yes. I like yes. that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ankle, so, yeah. I, 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 so, I like, I like him. I definitely am. Do you think you still have a place in radio right now in 2020? Oh, I will always have a place in radio. Mm. It's just that, well, the temps speak to me. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I do breakfast on, 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 Ma- massive, on Massive Metro massive. now. Yes, yes. Um, and you know, radio is that one medium that as long as you have a voice and energy and you can show up, you can do it. Yeah. So, the thing of you don't have a place. I mean, Howard Stern is still on radio. Yeah. Do you know who my ultimate radio icon is? It's mm. Angie Martinez. So, Angie Martinez. Yeah, Voice of New York. Me, so, me, it's Howard yeah. Stern. Yeah? Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Oh, I fucking okay. love him. So, yeah, you guys are the shock jock boys, right? So, that's why I got my book here. <laughs> I knew the difference. People don't know the difference. You see? <laughs> so people will be like, oh, but why don't you be like this? I'm like, but I'm not a shock jock. <laughs> shock you know? jock so my boys. thing was, So my thing was, I was like, they're shock jock boys, right? But I can be a hybrid uh, between personality and a little bit of sh- shock jock, but a woman version of it. Not like... In, like um, Wendy Williams. No, Wendy Williams used to swear at everyone. Do you know that? Mm-hmm. She used to make everyone run around in New York and whatever. Mm-hmm. So the difference between, you know, Angie was about the culture. Mm-hmm. And then, and then uh, in terms of like hip hop and everything. And then um, uh, Wendy Williams was more like the celebrity dirt, the gossip, mm-hmm. fighting with everyone. And, you know, and with, um, what's that Charlemagne guy? Charlemagne the God. Yeah, Charlemagne the God. You know, he used yeah. to... Um, produce. He used to produce and sort yeah. of like sidekick of, yeah. of, 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 of Wendy's. Wendy's yeah. yeah. So that's that. But I mean, you know, there's people like Tom Joy now who are still on radio. How are you listening to these guys? Because there wasn't internet back then uh, in 1940. China, you know, yeah. But I mean, we got friends who live all over the world. You know, I mean, for like I said, when Google, when when the internet and Google came, even if you couldn't listen, you could read oh, about yeah. people. Yeah, so you yeah. could, you know, you could picture what stuff. What are we learning on this? So, book? so, 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 you know, this is not really the book that I wanted, but this one is powerful radio. And what, why I brought the book is because before I got on radio, I had read a book like books like this. So I knew, for example, um, certain things. Like, for example, it says find a producer who reads the paper. Like, I knew that before I got a metro that if the producer doesn't read the paper, what are we going to talk about? Mm. Like, you don't read the paper, but you're producing a radio show. You know, you don't go to events. Like, someone was linking yesterday saying, oh, I heard that there was a, a, a big um, party in Soweto. I'm like, and what happened at the party? <laughs> you were not there. Why are you telling us about it? If you don't have information about it yeah, and you read yeah, it on Twitter, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very clear. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, talk about what you know, mm. you know? Um, so, so I read about that. So I, I, so I got myself vested in understanding news, understanding talk, information and personality. Because remember when I got on radio, I was doing community radio. So you were allowed to do any of that. Mm. And then at the same time, you could specialize, you know? Uh, but I was conscious when I got on when people said you're a DJ and I'd be like no I'm not I'm a, I'm a radio personality because a disc jockey disc jock on radio and a, and a radio personality are two different things and yeah. people don't know the difference yeah. Yeah. so that's why there's people who are jocks yeah. you know um, and that's all they, they, they're about the hits yeah. so then they, those people need a sidekick mm. to give them context and information and whatever mm. but don't just do it because there's a pretty girl who's going to sit with a guy who's a jock. Mm. Somebody needs to be smart between the two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and half the time, the jock is not smart. He doesn't care. Yeah. You know? But if you put, uh, you know, someone who's sharp and informed, then it, you know, that's why some, some, some um, double headers work. Like, Glenn worked with Unati. Mm. Um, oh, that was fire. Yeah. Because, because, you know, she came with that. Uh, and I'm not saying that 
Glenn was not prepared. Mm. But I'm just saying that they could play on that. And I think, I mean, um, Unachi also worked with who on, on why? Um, uh, with, uh, Root Boy. with Root Boy. Root Boy. Do you know what I mean? That was also a great combination. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so, fire. and you can't force that stuff. Just like Grant and Anele. Mm. You can't force it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, and then I knew from day one that I'm not a girl that's going to work with no guy. Mm. Actually, I was like, I don't want no guys breathing down my neck, making me feel like some girl. Would you ever uh, open like a radio school? Uh, yeah, I'll probably lecture in an academy or something. I mean, you know, I've been raising my kids, so all my, my money been going to my kids. <laughs> you know, now I'm... How are we I making this money? To, How are we making- I don't know. We need a tender. <laughs> we need a something. Something needs to happen. <laughs> we need something. We need uh, just something. in closing, I wanted to ask you, what do you think of social media? Um... I think social media is a good space to to gauge conversations and the and the 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 conch, the, the the state of a small minority. By the way, mm-hmm. it's, it's you know the whole country is not on social media, but people who have influence are on social on, on social media, especially Twitter. Yeah, like uh, on Twitter, all the newspapers on Twitter. That's why when you tweet something. You will be in the newspaper tomorrow. Mm. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have information on the stuff that you tweeted. It's because somebody in the newsroom is lazy mm. to research. They're going to take your tweet and put it in the newspaper. So, which happens um, to you? A lot. Which just happens to everybody mm. a lot of times. I mean, yeah, it does happen, and I don't care. Mm. So, but well, I care, but I don't care. I, I mean, you know what I mean? Mm. It's like, it's like I want to say what I want to say to because I'm, I start conversations. Mm. You know, um, I, I test the mood of how people are thinking about things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think it's also a nice space because radio used to be, we used to be able to do that with, with radio. Yeah. You know? It was a first Where, it was original, a, it's a professional uh, social, social media. media. We were able to do that. So, but now on Twitter uh, is that, uh, you know, is this outrage that always happens all the time that I just don't get. We just get outrages about everything and anything. Mm. Uh, and we miss the context. So, so that's why radio will always have a space because then they need to take that and con- contextualize it, mm. break it down. Because remember, we're a develop, developmental state. Mm. You know the stuff that makes news on Twitter today? Mm. Some people only find out about it a week later. I'll mm. have friends putting it on you know, WhatsApp group. I'm like, ah, we've moved on. <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about Meg G anymore. <laughs> They're like, hey, what happened, Penny? You said this. I'm like, hey, hey, hey I've moved on. I, I can't talk about that now. I'm already on another topic. Yeah. So, and then I realized not, every, not everyone is on Twitter. But you like a, 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 a someone you know from 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 back then who is has adapted and is handling social media well. I showed a lot of people that I used to work with at Metro how to get on Twitter. <laughs> wow! Because I was on Twitter and they were like, I, you know, you know what my one of my 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 good uh, natural skills. Mm. I can jump on things before people know that they should jump on. I'm good at that. So I, you're a visionary. Yeah, I'm a visionary. I'm good at and saying. Oh my God! There's something going on with Mac G, mm. and then also I'm 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 like a, a the light. When I get onto things, then people feel like, oh, I mm. think I can get on. So just like you're saying this whole it girl thing, mm. you know, there was no label to it, yes, but people know that oh, this is what Penny did. This is what she could do. This oh, so could do this and I do that. Okay, fine, don't do that. Yeah, she was like this. Let's you know. So it's it's almost like without realizing, you become a benchmark of some sort, some is that standard. Why jumping you know? onto podcast now, you can see. Pod, I know. I. Oh, you know, you know, if I showed you my penny brand strategy from 2009, you would think I'm talking nonsense. I have podcasts in there. Wow. I have Convergence Media. 2009? Yeah. Uh, Convergence Media in there. Because remember, I've been reading the books. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. You know what's coming. I know what's coming. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, and then, and then I knew that, you know, content is going to be king. But also, um, I mean, I got on, I got on uh, digital radio Back in 2013, PR TV, which was going to be global. I mean, I, I got on to work with MTV Base, which is now there's MTV Viacom. I was a first employee for, for those for those people. When yeah, yeah. And other people were like, ah, what is that? It's not going to work. I yeah. knew that that's, that's going to work. Yeah. I mean, um, being a youngster, getting on Metro FM, all the youngsters were going to Y. Yes. I was like, I'm yes. not going there. Yes. And all of them came. Too if I started, they'll follow. Yeah. I'm that girl. Yeah. You know, I'm, a, I'm Harriet Tedburn. I am Charlotte Matlaika. I started, you'll all follow. Actually, I always said to people, you must watch where I'm going because that's the next place you need to go. So now they need to get on, they need to understand digital radio. They need to understand how podcasts work. But if you don't have content, in uh, fact, you see, here yeah, you get exposed. Yeah, you're going to get very, yeah, get very, very, very exposed. Because the numbers yeah. are there to see. Yeah, they're there. <laughs> they're going to expose. And also, it's, it's, un, it's unscripted. You know, yeah. a lot of people uh, can hide behind scripts. Yep. A lot of people, actually, that we, we think are it, they're just good auto cue readers. Yeah. Remove the auto cue. Fact. 
fucked shit mm. and then others they're good at cramming mm. <laughs> they cram their script <laughs> there's no personality there's no context there's no lights and shade do you understand know what I'm saying yeah. and then all these things that I'm saying remember when I got on nobody told me that's what you do yeah. it just came naturally and then I did that and I'm like oh that's what it is oh that's what it is so what's a slay queen to you I always ask ladies that are interviewers eh, 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 slay queen yeah. is those girls who don't mess around <laughs> They have no time to waste those girls. <laughs> they are on the budget. <laughs> they are on the budget. Uh, but on a serious note, I mean, in, you know, obviously the word comes from, uh, you know, women who, um, you know, in charge yeah. of, of, of their business, mm-hmm. uh, you know, who are in control, uh, you know, who are killing it in their game. Mm. But whatever, it, field, it, whatever they're field they're in. Uh, but now it, it's just sort of like, you know, too loose in South Africa. It's about, you know, being on a... Yeah. Budget. It's right, about cool. being on. Yeah. One. yeah. It's about being on someone else's budget. Yeah. And then you know what? I'm. I'm too old, too smart to judge anybody. Mm. Let if 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 that's what tickles your fancy right now, Nana, do that. I mean, if you evolve and change, it's okay. Mm. That's what you can do tomorrow. And mm. and you know, you know, people are in different circumstances and whatever. Um. You know, I've I've risen above that. So if you call yourself a slay queen, sure, mm. go ahead. Uh. You know. Wouldn't you say you a slay queen? Because um, you were making your own money, fucking shit up in your field. I've always been making my own money. Yeah, I've been slaying from day one. Yeah. Original. <laughs> Origi- original slay mama. <laughs> original it girl. Actually, they must give me all the, the names. Eh? The royalties. You know, the royalties, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, the radio babe. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. the game changer as So, yeah. yeah. But, um, I mean, I just, for me, uh, I love girls. I want girls to be free. Yeah. You know, I want girls to do what they love. With passion to learn from mistakes. So you like mistakes. the sacrificial lamb? Oh, I don't like it when people say that because mm. it sounds very bad. Mm. But I worked the fields. Mm. I literally, I worked the fields. I removed the weeds. I planted the seeds so that the, the tree can grow. So some can enjoy the shade. I saw at TV managers, at station managers, so that the girls can do whatever they do. And some boys benefited. Gay boys, my gay friends. I put on gay boys on radio. Uh, you know, boy? Lots of them. Ephraim, Ecomesh, mm. you know, um, Shucks, those social butterfly guys, both audio. Mm. I used to have them, Philippe, you know, I'd put them on radio and people were like, ah, what is, why are you having gay people on radio? I'm yeah. like, hey, my daughter. So nobody had to teach me tolerance mm. and, 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 and queer, you know, what does that mean? I didn't have those labels. Yeah. I just thought, these are my friends, they're cool. We hang out too. Actually, when I was clubbing, I would arrive with my gay crew. You know, I rolled with them. So it's, 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 it's that kind of thing. You know, writers, producers, uh, theater people. And you, you don't want any recognition at all? <sighs> Though, if it comes, it comes. But I mean, I've learned that, you know, in 20, 2020. 2020, you know, you have to campaign for things. <laughs> it was just too much work. All these awards that people are winning, you must campaign and people must vote. I'm like, yo! <laughs> This is work. If you want this award, you must speak to the organizer. They put you on. So when I look at all these people with lots of awards, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So And some of it is PR, really. Yeah. So also, I remember, I studied PR. So I kind of understand, okay, you know, if you have a million viewers, followers, if they put you on an award, then they give you the award. Everybody knows all about the award. About the award, yeah. yeah. They don't, PR. Uh, it's yeah. PR. Yeah. You know, the thing is that now, can they sustain the thing after they've given you the first award? Mm. Uh, you know, but that's just that. And I think it was also a phase, you know, that we've gone through. Uh, mm. Because now we're getting into a play where you have to back it up. Yeah. You know, the beauty of like, the difference with, they say in Hollywood, it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. It means that you're entrenching yourself, building your base, you've worked on your foundation, whatever, and your house can stand. But when you become an overnight su- success, you have nothing to stand on. Hmm. So you, you spend a lot of time doing everything to maintain the status quo. So you will need lots of publicity. You will need a lot of, lots of managers. You will need lots of budget to, to pay and do. But eventually, one day, somehow, you need to prove your worth. Wow. And time is my favorite thing. Every it dog has you. Day. No, no, no. I won't say that. Time reveals things. Mm. It's just a matter of time. If you've got nothing to offer, we are going to see. Hmm. We are very. We're not in a hurry in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you for who you are. Yeah. What do you want to be remembered as when it's all said and done? Uh, when it's said and done, I will be remembered for. Uh, I want to be remembered for a great mind, a beautiful heart, an amazing soul. Um, a impactful woman of my generation. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. That's all you want. 
Yeah, that's all I want. I mean, I need some money to take my kids to important yeah. universities and get a few awards. But I'm going to live a long time. But you're making money. You're driving a Benz. Guys, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you can pay your installment, doesn't mean that you're making money. And, you know, um, I've been frugal, mm. you know. And I'm, I, I don't know. I come from the thing of like, yeah, it's because you saw my Benz now. Yeah. No, I didn't tell you that I drive yes, my yes, Benz. Yes, you know what yes, I mean? Yes, like, yes, and, yes. you know, uh, nobody, if I, unless if I told you what car I drive, you wouldn't know. Or what yeah. cars I've driven, you yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, but that's not... What that's the not essence. what that's not essence of who I am. Mm. You know, you don't know if this outfit of mine is a designer label or not. Mm. You know, uh, so I'm not. That's not what I'm, I'm about. Yeah. yeah, you know. So and then I'm not saying people shouldn't be about that. If they're about their designer label or whatever, so that's good it. for them. You yeah. know. But I can wear my small street uh, Chinatown whatever and still Some, uh, look fly. Uh, uh, that's for me. It's, it's about that small street. I'm I'm making an example. It could oh. be Small Street. It could be Melville. Yeah. Actually, I shop anywhere. Yeah, yeah I literally Small shop. Life. Small Street, uh, Chinatown. If if it speaks to me, mm. I wear it. Mm. You know, because it's, it speaks to my personality. How come you never con- got consumed in the whole industry, as but most told, people do? But I told you that I was very conscious and careful, and also I wanted to last in this industry. Mm. I wanted to Long last. Activity. I wanted. So I, I I didn't. I wasn't doing a race. I was not trying to be Marathon. the hottest thing, the best thing, whatever. I was just delivering. I was just doing the work that needs to be done. I show up. I do the work. If that makes me the best today, great. Tomorrow we need. To, we've got another challenge that we have to, uh, you know, that we have to deliver on. Are there so, any things that you look back in hindsight and like, ah, oh, I could have done that better. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Mm, no, not really. Mm. Not much because I was being true to myself. I think that's. Have you yeah. ever been fired? Uh, no. Never got fired. No, never got fired. So why did I, you leave I, Metro? I, I resigned. Oh, you know, you know my my when because I left Metro twice. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So the first time when I left Metro is because I was there sitting watching everybody get the slot. The slot. And then I was not getting it, and I was like, this thing is like you know when you date a guy, everybody knows who Ronald Jola is. This guy. You know, Udulako Franci, Tiltamalo, and Amara, what feba? He's busy with every chick, and everyone says, Mara Peniki Motu, Wama Gaiza. Abako Shelly. So, technically, that guy's a cock blocker in your life. You're not progressing, and you're, you're waiting for the day the guy changes his mind. Fuck that shit up. Are you kidding me? Like, and then I was like, at first you're like, oh, maybe something I did wrong. Yeah. Let me be in my best behavior. Yeah. Then you do everything right. And then you even ask the guy, do you think we have a future? And the guy says, just hold on. <laughs> you're like, what the fuck? I've been holding on for five years. You know, it's like now, you know, I wouldn't swear like this. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, you know, when have, you've been holding it? Yes, yeah. yes, So yes. now I'm like, stuff it. Yeah, yeah. Stuff it. Yeah. You know? So, and it, I blame Angie Martinez because then I listened to her, pot, her book, The Whole of December. Is it? The beast in me woke up, oh, wow. <laughs> like totally, wow. you know. Is so it a good listen? It's a good listen because okay, she talks about, out. her story is about Hot 97 and hip-hop's prominence and going mainstream mm. in the heart of New York. She so now she, so so you listen to that, I'm listening to that and watching it from how I was viewing it from outside. You know, she talks about when she met Jay-Z for the first Tupac. time. Tupac. Tupac, you know, she's got that exclusive last, interview yeah, with, with Tupac, Tupac yeah. like how that came about her going to do that interview who was in the room you know the spliff that the smoke so I sit there and I go you know I've had moments like that with people damn Wait, I've tell been her. at it no tell I'm saying with, with people in this industry like oh. when, when people rock up and nobody knows who they are I put them on and then I root for them and then I watch them become stars and I'm like I was there tell so, me a little bit more to story Lebu Matosa story. She's amazing. I met, she was I think amazing. I, I met Boom Shaka when I was like probably 14, 15. Mm. Got on the bus to go to Le Tamorin Dam in Mafike to go party. And Boom Shaka was there and Theo and Tembi and Junior Dread, you know. And then they became these stars. And then later on, I lived in Yeovil and then they became my friends. So, yeah, Lebu was at my son's baby shower. She gave me a thousand rand check <laughs> <laughs> for my son. She used to call me Nana. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, what else? I mean, she was just she was just a fragile, amazing, mm. gifted girl, talented. talented. Uh, oh yeah, and then uh, you know her performance at the launch of MTV Base. You know, MTV Base was the hundredth channel for MTV. MTV yeah. You know, in the so Africa was the was the last frontier. Mm. They had done MTV India mm. and you know in other continents. So we were the last frontier. So I was the only employee for MTV in Africa. Everybody else was based in London. Oh, wow. So my job was to go fetch uh, CDs yeah. uh, and video, videos rather from record companies and then tell people to say, oh, hi, my name, you know, I'm Penny. You, you all know me. There's this new channel that's going to launch. It's going to launch in, in May. 
um, and you know they want videos uh, you know that are going to go on so we need to send the video in beta in this format yeah. okay so this is the form you need to fill it in then I'll stack the videos in, in at Rapid Blues offices in Randbeck then put them in an envelope and then go post them yeah to London mm. and then they review the video and they say yeah that one worked no this one's not going to work that's mm. rejected please tell them to you know so, so things like that and then they're like oh yeah we want to meet this PR company we need a PR company I'm like there's total exposure there's this this there's this this then I introduce them where to where does label come into this so now Pindi who was managing label okay so I had to call a few people to come and meet uh, Jandre Lo, who was from oh, MTV. Oh, Jandre. Yes. Yeah, 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 I know yeah, Jandre. Yeah, Jandre. Yes, you mm. know Jandre. Yeah. So uh, everyone, I had to call up people, come meet Jandre. Is this guy from MTV? He's going to be in the country. So Pindi came to meet Jandre. And that's how they concluded label performing a top star. Ah. When, yeah, so that's where, that's, that's, that's where label comes. Wow. And, and, and I knew that label had to put in her own money to go to Nigeria, to go... Uh, you know when they were launching in, in Nigeria because the Heroka company was not interested in paying for her mm. you know but she she had global ambitions and she, he had con- she had continental ambitions and global ambitions and obviously with Pindi and everybody else and Marang they were going to do that so I, I I was in that space knew what was going on and what she wanted to do and what she was doing and all that and Brenda Fassi were you close with her? Mm, I went to Brenda Fassi's house I think once or twice mm. um, I was a little bit scared of Brenda. Mm. Uh, you know, actually, I, I was scared of a lot of people. Yeah. So even Lebu was a bit careful. Uh, Tandi Swa, you know, yeah. a bit careful. <laughs> uh, you know, but I, I had great admiration for them, mm. you know. And then I focused on the work that they do, their music. But I was, you know, I was in the same clubs with them, you know, party, same parties with them. So if sometimes they'll be performing, I'll be backstage just hanging out with them. Because we were you're like a party girl. Yeah, I, can't, so. I can't get that out of my head. I can't I'm, believe I'm the party original girl. party girl. <laughs> I, I start, that's what I did in Cape Town. You know, Wanda Baloy was saying to me when we were in Cape Town this December. She was like, my God, we went backstage to Black Coffee. Yeah. She was like, how did you get us here? <laughs> So, but so anyway, um, what was I talking about? Brenda Fuzz. Yes. Uh, Brenda Fuzz. Mm. So then I went to this church at some point, mm. and then she used to come to that church. And then this one time, uh, I went with her to her house, yeah. uh, you know, and then we were just like hanging out and chatting, and Bongani was there. Yeah, he was uh, still a kid. Was, I was, yeah, he was still a kid, yeah. uh, you know, so, but I wasn't like socializing and hanging out like then. And I would bump into it like CCP, uh, you know, in my, my early days when I was at um, Voice of Soweto. Um, and that's that. And then I think some awards and all of that. But we were not like, I wouldn't say I was in her, I was definitely not in her clique. In like, all these no. uh, these years, 25 years. And she was years, older than me. Is huh? it? Yeah. 25, 20 years you've been in the game. Who's been your, your die hard? Day one. Zandi Lenzalo. Mm. Yeah. So I met Zandi Lenzalo um, just when I was, at, I was at Voice of Soweto with my eyes set on Metro at the Summer Awards. She had, she was the the GM of Channel O. Oh, okay. So Channel O was, start, was starting out and she was working with Channel O and all of that. Uh, but for me, it was like about her radio career and her yeah. impact on radio. Um, and then it started a case of like, I go to her house once in a while. Sometimes it would be like once a year in December, she'd be like, I'm having a bride in my house. Yeah. You know? And I'd come at the time she was married to Bob Mabena. Uh, and then I would go there and hang out. And then slowly I became like family. So like literally, I go on holiday with Zani Lenzalo with my children. She's my children's aunt. So she knows me before I had kids. She knows me through all my bad relationships and all the public stuff. I go to her parents' house in Swaziland. They say we look alike. You know, it's a whole thing. So she's like, so that's literally that. And then other people would be, Zach is one of my closest friends. Uh, we're like twins, but we fight. Mm. You know, I mean, when I went to Metro, I tried to bring him on. Uh, you know, when I first got to Voice of Soweto, he was on drive. He put me on. You know, we used to roll out. Uh, you know, it was, we used to roll and hang out together. And yeah. it was just that that cool. We had that kind of relationship. So, um, Isn't it sad that we, 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 we have to do a podcast to hear stories like these? Like, there's no platform where you can just go and hear stories like these, man. Well, if we don't tell us, yeah, if we don't tell our stories, nobody else is going mm. to, to tell our stories, and we have to, we have to. That's why, uh, you know, I'm like, Mac G, you better put me on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I want to tell the story. Because again, is the thing that you were talking about. Do you do lots of interviews? Where I'm like, you know, people don't know actually how we got here. Mm. You know, there's there's a lot of work that was done, and if 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 some of us who who are in a position to to put context to that and we don't say anything about it, um, you know, that history will be lost, you know. So, and I was like, uh-uh, I'm not going to be that girl. I'm mm. not going to sit on the sideline. Uh, you know, I'm going to 
make sure that my voice is notable, my voice is, is heard, my voice is clear, because I know that, you know, I knew the journey of, uh, the, you know, the, the, the post-94 popular culture. Mm. It's part of my, 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 my coming of age, mm. my DNA. Um, and I was in places, like I said, I, would, I was being the kumbi of TKZ going to perform, uh, you know. At, you were uh, Jezebel, at, 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 Yeah. No, not really. I was not a Jezebel. <laughs> so, you know how I used to roll? So, Dineo... Which who one? is uh, Dineo who is uh, Tukula's sister okay. was friends of mine so I was very strategic about how I got into things mm. yeah mm. because I was avoiding being chowed oh, recklessly yes. and yes. roughly yes, yes. Yeah. so I was friends with Dineo <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah this industry will chow you they'll finish you China. 90 days it's how fast they'll do it <laughs> fast and that's why I would reach out to the girls yeah. because you know when I was on afternoon uh, I, was, I was on Saturday on radio I would interview a hot new girl mm. my phone would buzz oh yeah they want to they're like Penny yeah there's a new girl in town. She's on SABC One. We've seen her. You're talking to her. What's her name? Where does she live? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, if I mention people's names, they used to call me. It would be crazy. Because yeah. they would call me while I'm on air. You can mention them. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> like from, you know, when they first saw Kelly. Yeah. Yo, Kumal. When Clema was a hit town. Oh, Clem. You must remember I was on oh, radio. Oh. They would call me up. Eish. They would call me up. I'll be like, yeah. Hi, guys. I'm in peace. Whoa. Where was I, no, baby? Mini. Yo, 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 And over the years, it moved from like, it moved from industry boys to politicians, to business people, to tender premiers. I'm like, you muffles, leave these kids alone. Do you know what I mean? So, and then, and then the mothers, and then the mothers would also say, Oh, God, I'm paying him down. I mean, this industry. When I come on my tongue, I mean, I can't see me. Mamma, what's my little mamma? But mamma is finding so and so's life. I have no idea, the mamzo. I yeah. don't hang out with these children. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, again, I'm always in the middle. Yeah. You know? So, so that's, basic, that's basically that. So, yeah, Dineo was my friend from TKZ. I was friends with, with DJ Christos' wife, Busi. Do you, mm. you see? Yes. So, I'm in that space. Mm. That's how I would. You know, I'll be, I'll be there. I'll yeah. be there. I worked at Metro. Uh, you know, people who worked at Metro at sales. Uh, you know, Romeo's friends used to party at our events. So it means Doctor will be there. Mm. Uh, China will be there. A lot yeah. of others. So it'll yeah. be regular. It'll be the same people. Uh, you know, happy Chingila will be. There. These are people like in advertising yeah. and marketing. These are big shots. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so that's the. So that's how. You know, and I was like, this kid. You know, you're not really in, but you are there. Yeah. You know, Linda Lanim Kize is producing here you know there's a party you know I'm there so I'm, I'm so so you know when people say the fly one is for I'm fly because I'm high look but also I'm the fly one because I could just be on the wall <laughs> and witness and observe and keep my mouth shut <laughs> and mind my business drink yeah. your water and read the, drink my water you know and yeah. get out of the mess oh, yeah. wow. so that's that Penny I don't know if you if I'm correct me if I'm wrong but yeah. I think we first met at GLM's funeral um, that was the first time I met you. It was the first time we had a conversation. We've met. We've met where? Um, um, some industry event. Is it? Yeah. Because I was met. having a, a groupy moment. I'm like, that's Penny. Uh, we, no. She knows me. It's first, it's first. <laughs> I know everybody who gets on radio. Yeah. It's my job. Like, I even know girl. I know people in KZN, uh, you know, because I, I, if I, you know what I do when I, when I arrive in a city? I put on the local radio station yeah, yeah. because yep. I want to hear the beat yeah. and the sound of the city. Even overseas. Yeah. You know, and a lot of my friends from overseas would say, but I put on radio and I can't, I don't know where I am. Mm. You know, and then I, I learned from that also from my Nigerian friends and, yeah. you know, other friends from across the world will be yeah. like, I need to feel the heartbeat of South Africa or of Joburg, you know? Yeah. And I was always conscious of that. So yeah, we met there and you're like, listen, I gotta come on the podcast. You have come... What do you think? Are you happy with how it went? Oh yeah, I'm. I'm very happy because you know, um, the beauty of sitting on the other side of the mic, um, it has taught me not to be self-centered. Mm. That it's not about me. You know, yeah, yeah. It's about the conversation that you want to have. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Because that con- Okay, my son is calling. Can yeah, I take, yeah, the call? take the call? If my son calls, it's too important. Yeah, I know. Hi, puppy. So you know, um, I've learned that. When you go to interviews, um, you know, there's the person that's interviewing you. Obviously, that's what they want. And in, in radio, it's totally different versus where if I'm going to do a print media, you know, they might be chasing another story. I might get 60% of what I want to put out, mm. the other 40% because it's content, mm. you know. And sometimes I get the 80, they get the 20 because I'm pushing a new narrative and whatever. So for me, it's, it's, a, 
it's a it's a mutual relationship. Mm. So you know, you doing this, uh, you 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 need that conversation uh, to be out there. Mm. But I also have something to say. Mm. So we we create, we merge, yeah. we create. It's, so it's, it's a dance. We have a dance. That's mm. that's what it is. Mm. You know, you're gonna. Want something I'll give Some mm. of it I won't give <laughs> Give and take. and take It's a relationship So I treat everything As a relationship <laughs> Yeah I treat everything as a, as a relationship And I hate it When people think They can just take 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 Yeah, yeah. And I'm like No don't do me like that yeah. yeah So don't do me like that No I think like Dude When we speak about radio The reason why I don't like Talking about radio And interviews I can go Talk about radio the for, whole day. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? That's a lot. So for me, it was getting behind the essence of the person. Yeah. You know, what makes you tick. Yeah. And I feel like you, like, similar to me, you're just a village girl, man. Yeah, I'm just a village girl. In a big city. Yeah, I'm a village girl in a big city chasing my dreams. Yeah. And I'm bringing my village with me. Yeah. <laughs> That's why when, you, when you're like, yo... Come on, put me on. I'm like, sure. Yeah. You yeah, know? And yeah. it's, it's that hip-hop thing as well. It's yeah. like, you you know, you, you put... Because I'm... I'm a bridge of hip hop and Kwaito. Mm. You know, uh, you know the hip hop gener- first generation hip hop promoters on radio. I'm part of that generation yeah. of like people who were part of of that. So uh, and your, your Amo, no, Tiba Touch is later. I'm talking yeah. ammunition. Yeah, I'm talking League Club. Mm. Tiba Touch is a beneficiary <laughs> 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 of our hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's a beneficiary. So right, he comes cool. after. He comes later. 2020, we're doing the podcast. Yes, we are. Tell me more. So. Uh, uh, I don't like telling things before I do them. Okay. But I think, um, you know, the sword has fallen on me and it always falls on me all the time to give women a voice. That's number one. Uh, but secondly, also, it falls on me to bridge the gap between men and women. Yeah. So the, my conversations will probably be, ar- be around that. And my son is 14. Yeah. I don't want to be out of touch mm. uh, with, you know, you know, you know, I listen, you know, I listen to, to 947 with my kids, right? Mm. I'm like, ah, please, you know, I'm so tired of high felt. Yeah. They're like, mommy, it's not high felt. It's, <laughs> it's 947. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I used to listen to it a lot when, when they're pregnant because I'm, I'm very spiritual. I yeah. believe that I planted them, that in them, mm. that, you know, I think I listened to you as well when you were at 947. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. I was MacGyver then, not my, Yeah, you were MacGyver. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I listened to you. I did listen to you yeah. uh, as well because I, I also I believe in young talent mm. so I will always like um, be open to putting young talent on mm. um, you know um, and that's how I do my mentorship yeah. people come to me I, I put them in the space I introduce them to people I have conversations so I've had a lot of people who have done things like that like you said to me oh you know I think I want to get on this I want you know I want to write I'm like oh my friend Kossi is a journalist she's the editor of Drum Kossi this child wants to do so yeah. I do that yeah. you know and you want I, nothing I back Wow. So, you know, sometimes I joke, I'm like, I can shut down the industry. <laughs> <laughs> Levels. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, it's not like that. I don't, I, I don't do it because I feel like that's what I needed when I was young. Yeah. yeah you know, and I feel like if you and know, there was, yeah, no one there. there was no one there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time saying, I mean, if people had a problem with how I did things, why didn't anybody talk to me? Why did they just say she must see to finish? If mm. that's what they were saying. I mean, mm. obviously, I have no. You know, um, I don't know what they were saying, but I'm just saying. So I always feel like if you're young and you you you, you have these great ideas, sometimes you just need people to channel you and to tell you that it, you're not lost, you're okay, yeah. uh, and you're gonna mess up, but there's room for you to improve and get better. Yeah, that's all. Penny, thank you so much. Yeah, we're done. I, really, I gotta go get my son. Yeah, go get your son. Yeah. Really appreciate this. Love you long time. Love you long time. And uh, hopefully, yeah. When are we going to Vendor to eat mangoes? We can go anytime. Great. I'll be yeah. calling you. You'll be my uh, um, sugar mom. <laughs> <laughs> no sugar mamas, please. No sugar mamas. I'm speaking to people uh, my age. Yeah. Penny, thank you so much, man. Not! <laughs> <laughs> Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko.